Let me explain. Okay then. Sami and the Doctor were of the same species. We share similar DNA with only different alleles producing notable differences in our phenotypes. Well, that is where you were wrong. Go back deep into the Doctor's ancestry and you'll find that he does indeed have one human relative. From this has stemmed an array of alterations to his genotype, and consequentially the way he functions as an organism is slightly different to that of myself. The Doctor shares the same membrane structure as humans. This implies he has a phospholipid membrane composition. This is a membrane consisting of many phosphoglyceride molecules. Phosphoglycerides are the result of esterification reactions between the alcohol propan 123 triol two long-chained hydrocarbons with carboxylic acid functional groups, or fatty acids, and phosphate. Unlike triglycerides that have three non-polar hydrocarbon chains after the esterification, phosphoglycerides have also a polar end due to the negatively charged phosphate group and the terminal polar molecule to which it is attached. Due to the hydrophobic nature of the long fatty acid hydrocarbon chains, in humans, phosphoglyceride molecules are arranged into a bilayer. This enables the hydrophobic hydrocarbon chains to be separated from water molecules that are both outside the cell and within the cytoplasm. Cholesterol reduces the fluidity of this membrane and glycoproteins, polysaccharide polypeptide structures, act as receptors for antigens and general cell-to-cell -cell recognition. Being as the doctor shares this membrane structure with humans, I believe the best way to eradicate him will be through using a method that will break down his cell membranes, thus causing cell lysis. I have developed a bullet that contains concentrated sodium hydroxide solution contained within micelles. On entry into the doctor's bloodstream, the micelles will fuse with the doctor's own phospholipid membrane, the sodium hydroxide will be released, hydrolysis will begin, and there will be no return for the doctor. Now then, girl, you shall accompany me to the Sultara spaceship, and there you shall lie in wait for the doctor. I know he shall escape, and as I say, you shall inform me of his every move. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Doctor. Good. fighting against the Rutans for many years now, constantly in battle. Now I have developed a new machine, a machine that will give you victory against the Rutans and make you faster, stronger and more efficient in your cause. As a testimony to this, I have eliminated the one threat that remains. Yes, I have removed the Doctor. I have studied some Taran biology and I have realised a few key flaws in the way in which you work as an organism. You no longer eat, so you no longer have optimum energy stores. Instead, you receive your energy from probing beds at the back of your necks. Yes, efficient I know, because it means that it takes out the hassle of eating, but you don't receive optimum energy, and with a battle against the Rutans, that is what you are going to need. I have come up with this new machine. Allow me to tell you my ideas. Okay. So by utilising sugar as a source of energy, you some Taran warriors can synthesise extra ATP in a process very similar to that of human respiration. In order to effectively make use of already available resources, I have extracted much of the sugars directly from plants. This means I have a mix of alpha and beta glucose polymers. The Sontaran cellular biology and genetic makeup, however, means that you are only able to metabolize glucose of the alpha form. You are unable to metabolize glucose of the beta form. I have starch made from alpha glucose in the compositions of 1,4-amylose and 1,4-1,6-amylopectin. 
I also have cellulose, a key polysaccharide in the formation of cell walls. This, however, is a polymer of beta-glucose. Using a series of systems on board this battleship, I've been able to take all plant extracts, isolate the sugar polymers, and hydrolyze each set into their fundamental glucose monomers. What's more, I've been able to re-isomerize the beta-glucose monomers from the breakdown of microfibrils, pectins, and cellulose into alpha-glucose. This has essentially produced the greater supply of the glucose molecules that you require. The only expense, so to speak, is the need for a high temperature within the reaction chamber of 70 degrees Celsius, and we also need a plentiful supply of one molar hydrochloric acid for the hydrolysis. As explained earlier, you are a cloned race, you are based entirely upon mechanical efficiency, and therefore you only have the enzymes to digest and metabolize one type of sugar, which is the alpha glucose. It is important to not try to have any other type of sugar. Introducing another type of carbonyl sugar molecule, such as fructose, a ketose, would cause major damage to the Sontaran circulatory system, very much like the effects of LDL cholesterol and atheroma formation in humans. For this reason, all fruits of all plants have been collected and incinerated before entering into the reaction chamber. Of course, finding a way to integrate triglycerides into the Sontaran physiology would act as an even greater source of energy and reduce this need for specificity. I am researching into this system as we speak. Having said this, I ask that for the moment you accept this new method of energy access. I guarantee that it will provide you warriors a better chance in your war efforts against the Rutans. I've already told you my plans about synthesizing new Sontaran warriors out of human amino acids. And yes, that project is going on as we speak and it is a success. Along with both of these projects I've outlined today, I have also a new biochemical weapon that I humbly request you test on the Earth. The correct function of enzymes is just as important as water to man's existence. Enzymes are biological catalysts that are required to increase reaction rates in the body and work to lower the activation energy required for the reactions to ensue. These two characteristics mean that macromolecules can be broken down and metabolized fast, without any drastic effect on homeostasis through need for increased temperature. Each enzyme is specific to a substrate, and the entire mechanism of breaking apart large molecules into smaller products depends upon the lock and key mechanism between the enzyme active site and the substrate. As enzymes are a set of globular proteins, their structure relates very much to their function. The R groups of the amino acids interact during tertiary folding to form the active site of the enzyme, and so the active site is essentially the result of all the forces involved in maintaining tertiary structure. The active sites of human enzymes serve two main purposes, to bind to the substrate, then to break it down. If any one of these two functions are disrupted, death is an imminent prospect. There are numerous ways that human enzyme activity can be manipulated. I could try overheating the world's atmosphere, creating an average air temperature across the globe of 65 degrees Celsius. This would result in increased vibration of the atoms within the human protein molecules and eventual denaturing of enzymes through breaking apart of van der Waals forces and hydrogen bonds, holding together both the secondary and tertiary structures. But, well, that would require too much energy. I have considered using hydrochloric acid and pumping this into the Earth's atmosphere. The humans would inhale it and immediately respiratory problems would ensue. Tightness of the chest, shortness of breath, coughing up blood, it would all be, well, a little messy, and after prolonged exposure, enzyme action would start to fall as hydrochloric acid diffuses through the alveoli into the bloodstream and into the tissues. In the tissues, it would dissociate into hydrogen ions and chloride ions, and these would bind to and affect the ionization of R groups, thus breaking apart the enzyme active site and its tertiary structure. The problem with that plan is, well, I'd only end up disintegrating the entire planet, and then what would I have left to take over? I propose a new idea based on non-competitive inhibition. I intend on saturating the Earth's atmosphere with atomized silver ions. This way I can break apart the precise 3D structure of human enzymes and effectively stop human metabolism. The silver ions will break apart disulfide bridges within the protein structure and interfere with the lock and key mechanisms by altering active sites, thus stopping them functioning. What's more is that this method will leave the Earth in a perfect state for the Sontaran race to survive and spawn, whilst eradicating every one of the six billion humans in existence. I thank you, Pine Warriors, for listening. I now have other business to attend to, and very much look forward to our next meeting.